Dan is a professional musician. He is also a music teacher. In June of 2015, he had a very unusual, almost out-of-body experience. He felt a strong sense of deja vu. He started hearing things and seeing things that, quote unquote, weren't there. What was so bizarre about it was not only knowing that it, it wasn't real, but also experiencing what I knew was reality at the same time. So like, you know, reality was, was, was here and the visions and the audio that I was experiencing was also here. And my mind was like fighting over, okay, which is real? And it ended. He ended up with an MRI scan of his brain and the MRI scan of his brain revealed a relatively large tumor in the right side of his head, in the upper part of the temporal lobe, in an area that is involved with sophisticated hearing and musical function. Dan is a musician, and he's a music teacher. And in Dan's words, uh, music is my life. So we looked at his anatomical images at the location of the brain tumor, and it was very clear that it was adjacent to a structure called the superior temporal gyrus. And based on a lot of research uh, in the literature by people like Greg Hickok um, and Isabel Peretz, we know that the superior temporal gyrus in the right hemisphere is critically involved in music processing. There's an actual test that's been uh, validated and used uh, by many, many researchers, uh, a test of the Montreal battery for amusia. And so we uh, took the melodies that are used in that battery for our project. We sat down with, with Dr. Marvin and uh, we devised a series of tests that could be done during functional MRI, but also with an eye to, toward an eventual awake craniotomy and awake mapping session in the operating room. The scene in the operating room is pretty incredible, quite honestly, because here you have a young man um, with a tumor in the right side of his brain, lying on the operating table, completely awake. We have um, a full battery of stereotactic equipment, which allows us then to put a pointer on the surface of his scalp and to identify exactly where the tumor is. So now uh, we can plan the opening. We can then map the portions of the brain uh, that are responsible for his musical talent and his uh, musical abilities, uh, and then we can avoid damage to those parts of the brain while we're taking out the tumor. We've captured Dan's intraoperative performance in a video. During the surgery, Dan was laying on his left side. While Dan was listening to and repeating short melodies, Dr. Pilcher stimulated his brain using a bipolar electrical stimulator. Electrical corticography was used to monitor for the induction of after discharges or local seizures in real time. You can also visualize the stimulation artifact in those data. We registered the position of the bipolar stimulator using an intraoperative neuronavigation system. Stimulation points are visualized as small spheres on a mesh derived from the preoperative MRI data. Some were slightly wrong, but I, you know, I'd say okay or not okay, and then suddenly they were very wrong. Like, uh, it would be completely the wrong contour. It would go down when it was supposed to go up or he would hesitate uh, 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 and not even start, or he would uh, have commentary himself. He'd say, oh, that's not right. You know, so he could hear himself singing, know that it wasn't correct, but still not be able to do it correctly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, what we were able to show is that focal disruption of the right superior temporal gyrus selectively affects music processing, but not language processing. So we're breaking new ground because previous studies had not combined preoperative functional MRI with intraoperative melody repetition as a means to assay music ability in a surgical context. We found that preoperative functional MRI activity for music processing was relatively higher in regions that when stimulated resulted in errors. This is a, a cutaway of the right hemisphere showing the tumor reconstructed in yellow fill and the acoustic radio. We know that the right superior temporal gyrus is connected to another structure in the frontal lobe of the right hemisphere, the inferior frontal gyrus, via a large white matter pathway called the arcuate fasciculus. So it's very possible that 
Dan's inability to perform the melody repetition task is the result of that electrical impulse spreading throughout a constrained network of brain regions and actually affecting processing non-local to the site of stimulation. We asked should we do some more of these uh, language and music tests and at that point they decided no, let's, let's do the, the real life scenario. Let's pull out the saxophone. So we went and got the saxophone where it had been sitting in the corner and handed it uh, to Dan. And, and there he is on his side, you know, very awkward to play a saxophone lying down. a year out from his surgery. Um, he's teaching, he's playing his instrument. Um, he feels that his musical talents are at least as good as they were uh, prior to surgery. And uh, he does not have seizures anymore. His tumor is gone and he has his entire life ahead of him.